Welcome to Be Less Stupid, the show for people interested in how the world really works. For people interested in facts, not opinion. For people who love orangutans, like this guy who took a burlap sack and made a hammock. Uh, for your information, that orangutan and Governor Chris Christie have the same number of Republican convention delegates. On today's episode, does tapping a soda can prevent it from exploding? I'll reveal the results of my extensive investigation. But first, we begin with a big countdown of facts you should know, but probably don't. 40 million electronic book readers were sold worldwide in 2012. In 2015, that number dropped to just 20 million. And that is great news for books. You remember books, right? And if not, go to any Trump rally. Books will be the thing his supporters are burning. The greatest jobs president that God ever created. The drop in e-reader sales is bad for companies like Amazon, but according to several recent scientific studies, you are less likely to recall or really learn information that you read on your cell phone, your laptop, or your tablet unless it has to do with heads up, in which case I repeatedly kick my 11 year old's butt. She still has no idea who Hawkeye and Maud are, idiot. Our brains store information from different input sources differently. We tend to read digital material more quickly and we're more easily distracted, especially if the device is also connected to the web, in which case, instead of long-term memory, some information ends up in short-term memory. Digital material is read more casually and often in less than ideal circumstances. You're reading your phone in a busy Starbucks, in between other tasks, or while having sex. But am I the only one who wants to know how many more Twitter followers he has? Anyway, if you want to be less stupid, sure, read your blogs and your sports scores on your cell phone or your Kindle. But if it's stuff that matters, like a history book or a great novel or some important work documents, or the latest Hunger Games fan fiction. You gotta read them on paper. Over uh, trending on Twitter, Chipotle is mailing coupons to customers for free burritos, chips, and salsa to win them back after two recent E. coli outbreaks resulted in a 30% stock drop. So now, if you want to experience intense stomach cramps and crippling diarrhea, you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Attend a Donald Trump rally in person. Coming up, I'm going to reveal if tapping on a soda can prevents it from exploding. Plus, see if you can guess why this soda has an erection. All right, there's your CO2 escaping. Welcome back to Be Less Stupid. My wife taps the top of a soda can before she opens it. She insists that it prevents the soda from exploding. She thinks she's popping the gas bubbles or something that have accumulated on the top. It's an idea that is to science what Colonel Sanders is to the actual military. Tapping a soda can. It's the subject of today's web explanation. Now, before we get to the business of tapping cans, I thought we should first get down to business of tapping that can. For your information, that was the least successful porn film of all time. Back to the soda. Carbon dioxide stays dissolved in the soda because the pressure on the outside that keeps the gas in is more than the force created by the CO2 to escape when the soda is at rest. But when you pour or shake it, that equation is reversed and the gas escapes. Oh shit! Uh, I think that seltzer has some kind of prostate condition. One other thing, if you get an erection like that, not only should you call your doctor, but also the people from Ripley's Believe It or Not. 
Incidentally, uh, that penis is so big, if it was part of a magic act, the magician would have to cut it in thirds. Anyway, with the penis jokes out of the way, we're back to the experiment. Up first, we needed a control. I'm just gonna so shake it up. I shook the can of soda, and then I just opened it. And then uh, open it up. Next, I shook cans for about five seconds each, then tapped them three times on the top and opened them up. Tap it. Each of the cans exploded pretty much the same as the control can. And for good measure, I did the same thing again. Only this time, I shake it up. the cans of soda had been refrigerated instead of at room temperature. And as you can see, making them cold so much. didn't result in a noticeable difference. The cans still exploded after tapping on them. Yeah, we still get lots of uh, stuff spilling out. Then, after tapping on the top of the cans, I tried tapping the cans on the side. There's a video that's been seen about 1.5 million times where a guy shakes up cans of seltzer, then taps on them on the side, and then he opens them, and they don't explode. In his case, tapping the side worked. According to him, the CO2 collects inside of the can at what are called nucleation sites, which are areas on the interior of the can with imperfections that allow for pressure changes that make it easier for the gas to escape. And if you tap the can on the side, the gas bubbles then rise to the top. So when you open the can, although some gas does actually escape, it doesn't force the liquid out with it as well. So I tried tapping the cans on the side too, with my finger. And with a hammer. And in my test, tapping the soda cans on the side made no noticeable difference whatsoever. Not so much. So, what explains his result and mine? Well, two options. One, CO2 gas bubbles saturated in plain seltzer act differently than gas bubbles saturated in Coke, Diet Coke, and Fanta which includes uh, sugars and various other flavorings. Or two, his tapping on the can around its entire circumference had an effect that tapping in one spot does not. So in the big picture, tapping the top of a can does nothing. And if you see my wife, please tell her that. As for tapping on the side, gotta say, still up for debate. There is one other thing you can try. Opening the can slower will slow the implementation of the pressure change on the can. So you could try that. Also, the effect won't be as severe on cans or bottles with larger openings, which will spread the pressure change out over more surface area instead of concentrating it. So if you've got something to add to this story or some video of an experiment you tried, send it to me and I will include it in an upcoming episode. And now it's time for today's fact adjacent. A fact adjacent is a fact that is, well, eh, not 100% based in absolute scientific truth, but rather is, well, nearly true. A restaurant that charges you twice as much for fresh guacamole made tableside by your server is totally ripping you off. The guacamole made in the kitchen with the same ingredients tastes the same and costs $5 less. Anyway, if you've got a fact adjacent, send it to me. If I use it on the show, I will send you a promo code to watch my three other shows 100% free. There's This versus That, the show that's kind of similar to Mythbusters, but the experiments are about nonfiction stuff. There's also Get Sex Tonight, which has been called The Daily Show Meets Showtime's Masters of Sex and Pizza with Writers. It features interviews with the writers and creators of television's best shows. Remember, if you like this show, please share it with your friends on social media. That's how we spread the good word. That's it. We're out of time. I'll see you next time on Be Less Stupid. Thanks.